Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens. This is episode six, Left Handers. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my co-host, Madison Whalen. Hi, everyone. How you doing today, Madison? Uh, not too well, seeing as I'm kind of sick, but I still decided to go through with the podcast. You are a trooper. I know you're not feeling well, and we appreciate you joining us today. So today we're going to be talking about all things left-handed. Um, and we're doing this because you're a left-hander, aren't you? Yes, I am. And how long have you been a left-hander? My entire life. Yeah, that, that's usually how that works. Yeah, you don't really convert unless you're, le- unless you're ambidextrous. Or unless you're rocky and then you learn how to box with your right arm. Sure. Okay, you didn't see that one. All right. Yeah. So we are going to talk about uh, some famous left-handers so you know you're in good company. Uh, we have a survey of how, what are the effects of being left-handed. We'll talk about the results of that. Uh, then we'll talk about some of the challenges left-handers face and, and how you deal with them. Uh, then there was an interesting article I had from, um, uh, psychologists who explain how left-handed people work differently. Uh, then we will talk about some fun facts about left-handers. Let's get right into it. So, uh, you know already that there is a small percentage of the population who are left-handed. Yes, I actually know the the entire percentage, which are 10% of humans are left-handed, and the other 90%, of course, is right-handed. I'm glad you specified humans there. This way we know who we're talking about. Yep. Um, so, of the 10% that are left-handed... There are some notable exceptions from history. Uh, And this is just a brief list of people that you probably heard of. So you've got Leonardo da Vinci. I've heard of him. uh, Engineer and artist. You have Henry Ford. Yeah, I've also heard of him. You have uh, Marie Curie. I don't know what that is. Okay, Marie Curie was an inventor or a scientist in the 1800s who discovered radium. Uh, a radioactive material. She did all kinds of work with it, medical applications, uh, developed the X-ray machine, um, and had major contributions to science. Mm. Um, Benjamin Franklin. Really? He's left-handed? He was le- Well, he was left-handed. He's dead now, so uh, he's I, I know. not left-handed now. I know. Um, so you've heard of him? Yes. How about Michelangelo? Um, isn't he an artist? Uh, he's a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle, too, actually. Daddy, I know. Um, so was Raphael. I know. He was another Renaissance artist. Uh, Renoir. I don't know who that is. Who Ren- is it? Renoir was another artist. Another artist. Uh, how about Albert Einstein? I'm pretty sure everyone heard about him, and I never knew he was actually left-handed. Yeah. Um, how about Jimi Hendrix? you know who that is? Uh, no. He was a very talented guitarist in the 1960s. Mm. Uh, how about Babe Ruth? I've heard of him. Okay. So, of the people here, what? how could you categorize these in a few simple terms? Like what they did? Well, we know a bunch of them are artists, right? Yes. So they got to be creative. Yes. We know a couple of them are pretty smart people. You look yes. at Da Vinci and Franklin and Einstein and even Henry Ford... Pretty smart people, right? Yep. This is some pretty cool company to be in. Mm -hmm. The only notable athlete here is Babe Ruth. Yeah. Now, he's not the only talented athlete that's that's left-handed. But this little cross-section here and the talent that's in this little pool, I think will play out a little bit more as we get further into the episode and look at some of the things we're going to talk about. So... Just the takeaway for this is, you're in pretty good company with these people. Yeah, that's good to know. (music) 
There was a survey that was done by a website called Left Handers Day. Did you know there's a Left Handers Day? Yeah, I actually learned from a video. That's pretty interesting. You guys have your own day. Right handers don't have their own day. Yeah. So, so this survey uh, asked a series of questions to try to get a feel from left handers uh, of what the effects of being left handed are. And I don't know if we'll go through all these, so we'll go through the first couple here that are interesting. Um, so they asked, do you consider yourself to be more intelligent than the average person? And I'm going to ask you that. Do you think you're more intelligent than the average person? Well, I would tend to agree in certain, um, in certain situations because, you know, I have a really high average in math, which is how I got in the advanced math program. I also am good with all my other subjects because I have, on my report cards, you've only seen A's, even though, like, there are, there are certain numbers that aren't, like, 100s, but I still get very high grades in my report card. And you've seen how I don't really need too much help with math because I'm a pro at it, and, well, I would consider myself a pro. So... You've consistently gotten principal's list for straight A's. Yes. How many other kids in your class get that? Well, since we're in the advanced math, everyone is smart, and they, a lot of people have gotten principal's list, and people have also gotten honor rolls. So you're in honors, you're, you're in advanced math. How many kids in your class, percentage-wise, are in advanced math? Is it like a 20% are in there and 80% are not? Mm, well, there are... There are four classes in total, and each class has a, has a similar amount, but mainly other class. but we probably have the least amount of kids. So it's safe to say you're probably in the top 20% of your grade. Probably. I think that answers the question right there. So the survey said that 58% of the respondents considered themselves more intelligent. I think that's pretty much in line with what you're seeing. Yeah. The next question they asked was, do you consider yourself to be more creative? Well, I can, Well, whenever I do the creative writing that I have now, um, they only require a paragraph, and the last time I did it, I wrote three pages. That's pretty creative. Yes. And I also make comics, and I, oh, I also um, like to draw and pretty much... Be creative as well. So, safe to say you're pretty creative. Yes. Well, the survey, 48% of the respondents thought they were more creative. 43% said they were average. Only 9% said they were less creative. Mm. So, those two points there, I think, highlight our famous people. So, you had a lot of creative people and a lot of intelligent people there. Uh, so, I, that's sort of in line with what we're seeing with you and with the poll. Uh, the next question they ask is, do you consider yourself to be more awkward or clumsy? Well, I've never had too much of, of, of a problem with being clumsy. I mean, sometimes I am a bit awkward, but I would say I'm not very clumsy because, well, I don't really make too many mistakes. I mean, we're, hu we're all humans, so... We do make mistakes, but... Speak for yourself. Well... That's a joke, sweetie. Well, that's good. If, if you don't think that you're clumsy or awkward, that's contrary to what this poll suggests because 85% of the people who are polled consider themselves to be more awkward or clumsy. None of them consider themselves to be average, and 15% consider themselves to be less clumsy or awkward. Uh, the next was, do you experience difficulties at school... Related to being left-handed? This was a yes or no question. Mm. Well, I don't, I've don't. i never really experienced any problems. I mean, if you met me for the first time and you saw me right, you might be a little shocked, but there haven't really been any like people making fun of me because I'm left-handed. What about working in school? Like, like, And we'll talk about this in more detail, but do you find it difficult writing as a left-hander or tools for left-handers or anything like that? Well, certain, well, with certain tools and sometimes with writing, yes. Okay. 
And that's in line with the survey. 71% say they do experience more difficulties. Uh, 29% said no. If you have difficulty, do you receive help from teachers? I've been used to having difficulties with being left-handed, but I've never really, it's never gotten hard enough to where I needed any help. Well, that's good. Uh, Because according to the survey, you probably wouldn't receive it. Uh, 24% of the respondents said they did get help from teachers. 76% did not. Um, The last thing we had in the survey here uh, is, have you ever used any specialist left-handed implements or tools or left-handed scissors or anything like that? Yeah, I've used them. Is there a lot of those available at school? Uh, no, I have to sometimes go to the store normally if I need a pair of scissors because they are all, the school scissors are kind of uncomfortable for me. Yeah, that's what I expected. 61% of respondents said they have used left-handed implements. So kind of, kind of an interesting little survey there about how, how being left-handed affects us people. I'm guessing this next section that we talk about influenced a lot of those answers. And this section is um, challenges for left-handers. This came from a website called Interesting Engineering. So I'm going to run down this list here and just get your thoughts on it. Um, One of the number one things on the list was that most student desks are right-handed, not left-handed. Yeah. Now, do you experience that in school now? Well, not yet. I might experience it when I go to middle school, but, um, yeah, I can already picture what's going to happen. I'm always going to have to stretch my arm. I won't be able to lay it down, and I'll get tired quickly. Yeah, or you'll have to sit in an uncomfortable position or something like that. Yeah. Um, left, uh, a lack of left-handed scissors, which we've kind of talked about already. Well, yes, but when I normally buy them, I've always been able to get the left-handed scissors, but if I wasn't told to buy any and I have to use regular scissors, they're kind of uncomfortable for me. I'll bet they are, yeah. Uh, One you probably haven't encountered before, but measuring tapes tend to be upside down. So usually when you use a measuring tape, you know, the, the ones that pull out of the little holder, Usually what happens is you hold it in your dominant hand and then you pull it out. Well, since they're designed for right-handers, you if you would hold it in your right hand and pull it out, it would be right side up with the numbers. But if you hold it in your left hand and pull it out, the numbers are upside down. I don't know if they make left-handed um, measuring tapes or not, but that may be something you run into in the future. Here's one that I know you've talked about. You get ink or graphite on your hand when writing. Yep, I have that happen daily. And what did you call it the other day? I called it Silver Surfer Syndrome. Silver Surfer Syndrome. Now, I've seen certain implements that actually fit over your pinky and then come up over the back of your hand there so that when you write, that gets dirty. So we know that they've got instruments for that. Uh, We also talked about this one. Uh, Spiral notebooks are like writing on a hacksaw. So if you're writing on a spiral notebook, the spirals are always to the left of the paper. Yep. So I have to imagine that that is an uncomfortable experience. Yeah, but I've learned to get used to it, and it's not that big of a problem, but still a little difficulty. So what do you do to compensate for that? Do you hold the the paper differently or something? Well, I... Just try to write quickly when I'm near there, like slightly quicker than how I would write normally to make it, to make sure I don't have to go through that uncomfortable position for a very long time. Okay. So I have to imagine if that's the case, then three ring binders are probably a similar problem to you. Yeah. Which is why I always take out the paper and and move it a little further to the right so I can write. Which is the advantage of a three-ring binder over a spiral is that the paper is removable, obviously. Yes. Uh, can openers. You don't do a lot of can opening, but can openers tend to be for right-handers only. Yeah. Uh, and normally what happens is the way the can openers work is you hold the can opener in your left hand, you clip it onto the can, and then you crank the little knob with your right hand to spin it around and open the can. 
Well, if you have to do that, holding it with your right hand, then you're crossing your arm over to turn it. I have to imagine that's really infuriating. <laughs> the number pad on the keyboard is always on the right. Well, I've never really used that, and I technically use both my hands to type, and I've never really used the other number pad. I just use the numbers that are on top of the original keyboard with all the letters and such. Right. And and I can see as you get older and, and move into the higher grades, this becomes more of an issue because you're doing calculations pretty quickly with um, the keypad, especially if you do any kind of accounting or anything. Yeah. Um, the world was, since there's so many right-handers, it seems like the world was made for right-handers and anyone who's left-handed has to go through the difficulties i mean they do make left hand they make stuff for left-handers but you still go through difficulties i agree and the problem is when it's made for left-handers it's a smaller audience um, of consumers and as a result your prices go up Um, but specifically speaking to the keyboard incident here Uh, I know for a fact there are keyboards out there that are modular keyboards um, that uh, one that happens to be a gaming keyboard from a company called Mad Cats where the numeric keypad actually detaches from the keyboard and can be moved over and put on the other side, Um, which is kind of neat, but it doesn't change the order in which the numbers are, so the numbers are still in the same order. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's some of the challenge. I'm sure there's a lot more that you face and we can probably talk about those at another time. Uh, the next thing that we had was a, uh, study that was prepared by a group of psychologists. This was posted on a website called Fast Company. And This explains how left-handed people work differently. And we've talked about some of these in the past. Yeah. Um, The first thing on the list is they're used to putting up with challenges. And that's kind of what you said is that, well, you're kind of used to being left-handed and and things being difficult. Yeah. Um, And what they suggest in this study is that because of that constant inconvenience of being left-handed that left-handed people are much more capable of putting up with challenges as a result. Do you think that there's any validity in that? I think that that could possibly be true because along with that, I have been trying to go through school as best I can and putting up with problems hasn't really been that hard for me. Good. And hopefully it it will serve you later in life and make it easier later in life. Um, the other thing they found was that left-handers follow creative intuition. And and by that, they mean whenever you do something, when you, whenever you're problem-solving or you have a project to do, um, you approach it with a creative mindset where you're much more imaginative um, rather than just a systematic go in and, and solve a problem type thing. I think this yields great results in your creative writing where instead of having a paragraph or two, you've got three pages. What do you think? Yeah, I would actually tend to agree because when we got when we had gotten another assignment, I already had ideas in my head thinking of having it like we were, were doing an assignment about a field trip gone wrong and I already had a few ideas like it would be at the point of view of a student and I would come up with names and he would have friends and then like something would happen and they would go on a new road. And that's the thing. You know, I think the wonderful thing I, I see with you is whenever you have an assignment that's a creative assignment, not only are you exceedingly capable of doing it, you're enthusiastic about it. And I think that's awesome. And combining that with your aptitude for math, I think is a large portion of why you do so well in school. You have the creative side, you have the mathematical side, and you combine those two. You'll make a great architect someday, I think, with Thank those you. two talents. 
They also say that the left-handers process information quicker. So as you're given assignments at school, you're capable of handling that stuff much faster, asking fewer questions of the teacher, getting something you might not necessarily understand, and figuring it out relatively quickly. Do you find that's the case with you? Yes. I tend to rarely ask questions because I can understand quickly. And I think that um, attribute lends itself to this final one uh, finding that was in the study that left-handers tend to be more independent. So you work better independently. Um, you don't necessarily need to have a team environment. You don't need to depend on other people to contribute to your success. Uh, and I think that largely describes a lot of how you operate, doesn't it? Yes, that would describe me in many ways. And and that's sort of how you prefer to do some of your assignments too, isn't it? Yes, that's how I would prefer to do my assignments, even though I have to work a work with other people. But I would prefer to work independently. Right, right. And I think we just have to be careful of that because that certainly could lead to conflicts and difficulty later on. Working independently is great, but the ability to work within a team is also a good attribute that we have to work on as well. So that brings us to our fun facts about left-handers. Um, this little survey or study came from a, a website called Media Planet, and they just went and looked at certain numbers and certain interesting little traits that left-handers had. The first one that they said was that left-handed people score higher when it comes to creativity, imagination, daydreaming, and intuition. They're also better at rhythm and visualization. So, And this is you know, supportive of what we've talked about already today, is that you're very creative. Do you find that you daydream a lot? Yes. I actually, whenever I listen to a song that I know, I would actually picture in my head with characters from TV shows I watched, and I would just have a little adventure while doing the song for some reason. I also tend to have a, ma a huge imagination where, once again, TV show characters would come to life, even though I know they're not there, but I would always, like, I would always tend to see them. And that's the one thing that I've noticed watching you play with toys or... Even when you tell a story, you don't just recount actions in a story. You're very vibrant in how you describe the setting and the people and the emotions. And, you know, when you tell a story, like if, you, you know, you're telling me a story in the car or something like that, it's like you're narrating a book where you describe your setting and everything. Uh, and it's very different than most kids your age, where most kids your age will just say, you know, Susie ran down the street, whereas... You know, I get to hear what kind of houses it was. What did Susie look like? How old was she? What was she wearing? You know, were there cars on the street? So it's it's a much richer experience when you tell a story most of the time. Yeah, I can actually already imagine it now. Susie would be running down the street. She was dodging and ducking cars. Eventually, she moved on to the sidewalk where there were a whole heap of houses all next to each other. And eventually she'd stop and run into one of the houses. Exactly. You know, it's a lot more than just Susie ran down the street. Uh, they go on to say that left-handed people are believed to be good at complex reasoning. I don't know how many instances you've been put in a situation where you have to do complex reasoning. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Well, can I have a little example of what complex reasoning is? Because I really don't know what that is. But I might have done it before, but I probably didn't know what it was. Well, the, the only thing that I could think of is, is a mathematical equation. You know, these compound uh, written out math problems that you tend to get, like uh, in paragraph form. You know, Joe goes down to the grocery store with $20 and he needs to buy apples. And the apples are 50 cents each. But he also needs to buy pears, and the pears are 25 cents each. How many apples and pears can Joe buy? And you can take all those variables, mash them together, and come up with a reasonable answer. Now, that I'm sure that question's not a valid question, but that type of complex reasoning, where it's not just A plus B equals C, 
you have other factors that you have to consider in order to get the answer that you're looking for. Well, I would tend to agree I'm good at those. I always make sure I reread certain things I don't understand about it, and then I always make sure to do all the parts I need to do. And I think that's important is, is you know, thoroughly understanding it. Left-handers are believed to hold a sporting advantage in tennis, baseball, and boxing. I'm guessing you don't box a lot. No. Do you play tennis at all? Well, I do normally. I've done the video games, but I've also heard that um, um, athletes who play tennis who are left-handed have an advantage. And they, they indeed do. What about baseball? Do you like baseball? Well, I've done things similar to baseball. I haven't really been too much into it, but I definitely would do it if I needed to for gym and such. And baseball, I would actually prefer doing it over soccer or kickball. We already know your your love of kickball. Yeah. Um, so that question itself actually lends us back to the first thing we talked about with our famous people, with Babe Ruth. Babe Ruth was a famous baseball player, probably the most famous baseball player, really, who played several positions for different teams. And the last fun fact that we have here, and this is a good one, definitely a good one, left-handed college graduates go on to become 26% richer than right-handed graduates. What do you think of that? Well, that's pretty impressive. I actually never knew that could happen to me to anyone who was left-handed. I think that comes from that uh, higher intelligence and creativity allows you to be much more um, profitable in business. Um, I also think having Examples like Henry Ford in there who were exceptionally rich tend to bring that average up as well. Um, One last fact that uh, I did have that was not in this particular survey was that six of the last 12 presidents were left-handed. Really? That is correct. And that's, you know, when you look at it from a just very basic statistical analysis, that's like, all right, so 50%. Well, you know, half the people were, half the people weren't. What's significant? Well, the significant thing is when you apply the known fact that only 10% of the population is left-handed, statistically speaking, only one of those 12 should have been left-handed. Instead, half of them were. Wow, impressive. Yes, that is impressive. So the takeaway from this is that you can be 26% richer and president because you're left-handed. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so that was that was all i had on the agenda for discussion um did you have any closing words for us well yes to anyone who is left-handed i know you may face difficulties but i support anyone who still still has these problems but i'm sure as you get older you'll tend to not think of your, those difficulties as much, and I would say to look on the positive side of being left-handed, use your creativity as I have, and enjoy being a left-handed person and being one of the 10% of people who are left-handed in the world. That is awesome advice. Um, uh, I'd like to close by inviting folks to... Um, Give us some feedback. We have our website up now. If you go to www.insightsintothings.com, you can see all the shows that we produce. Uh, If you want to go just to this podcast, you can go to podcast.insightsintoteens.com. You're also welcome to comment on the site or shoot us an email at comments at insightsintoteens.com. If uh, you have questions, comments, feedback, Uh, or if there's any topics you'd like us to cover on the podcast, we would love to hear from anyone who's interested. And make sure to check us out on YouTube as well by looking up Insight into Things. Yes, we are up on YouTube now with uh, video versions of all the podcasts. Uh, That's going to do it for our podcast this week. Thank you for your time, Madison. 
Thank you for having me. We really appreciate you uh, sitting with us today, even though you don't feel so well. Uh, we'll be back next week with another podcast, and hopefully you'll be feeling better by then. Probably I will. Okay. All right. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye. Goodbye.